Whew. 14 hours of college football. Boy, am I glad we're back at it with college football. My goodness, everyone. Welcome to the Week Zero Recap. My reactions to Week Zero. Everything that happened in the past 14 hours today was just wild. Everything was wild. Uh, we start with Austin P. Western Kentucky. You had Austin Reed out here. It's Austin touchdowns. He's lost four of them. Austin P. You know had some fight in them though. They had they had a little bit of that dog in them. But it was okay. It was okay at the end of the day. Western Kentucky they won the game. 38-27. In the game, you know that started about 30 minutes after in Dublin, Ireland. The Big Ten opener. The Fox. College football opener as they continue their march to wanting to be a big dog in college football as a media rights partner. Nebraska, Northwestern. What a game this was in stupidity. I'm not talking about Northwestern. I'm talking about Nebraska. First, first off, Casey Dawson. He did all right out there. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie to you. He did all right. He did all right. But the same things he did in Texas came rearing back like it was yesterday, and the memories started pouring in for me as I just looked on and I looked in despair and disgust at what in the world was happening. We're talking this. This is just this is just a sad second half performance by Nebraska. They were up 11, 28-17 at one point. And then you had Ryan Holinsky, Evan Hole, at a Northwestern offense run it down Nebraska's throat, continued to gain yard after yard through the air and on the ground, mostly on the ground. And Northwestern was able to overcome an 11-point Nebraska lead. And they win this game. Not 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 only you know you got you gotta you, not only did Nebraska implode on offense and defense again Scott Frost with the dumbest decision the college coaches moment hashtag college coaches moment of the day. You go for an onside kick up eleven in the third quarter. Why would you do that? Come on. I can't call the college kickers moment because I mean that's not the fault of the kicker this time. This is a this is a purely hashtag college kickers moment. Or rather a college coaches moment, excuse me. I almost said college kickers. But you know what I meant. Speaking of college kickers, let's just get it out of the way right now. College kickers. Hashtag college kickers. All of y'all let me down once again today. Every single game probably had a miss kick at some point. Everybody continues to let me down in hashtag college kickers, baby. But Nebraska, again, this team has some fight in them. They have that fight in them, but they just couldn't get out of their own way. And it's another one-score loss for Scott Frost as he's, what, 5-21 and 21 now in these types of games? This, this is not okay. This is not going to get you the job done. This is not going to get you anywhere, my boy. So, something's got to improve because uh, Oklahoma's coming. Oklahoma is coming for Nebraska and the rest of the Big Ten. And the rest of that schedule. I mean, again, the Big Ten and Oklahoma. You know, the rest of the Big Ten games and Oklahoma coming up for Nebraska. The Northwest, they got to be feeling real good about themselves right now. Again, the Big Ten West is a dog fight. It's going to be a dog fight. I'll tell you that much right now. I really, I genuinely do not know who's going to come out of the Big Ten West. I couldn't tell you. I, that's why I don't, do, I, don't, I don't do predictions like that. Like, you know. But Northwestern with great momentum to start the season. Good job by the Wildcats. Idaho State UNLV real quick. Doug Brumfield was out here putting up putting up points. Four TDs. He tossed. The 50-burger, we thought UNLV was going to have the highest point total of the day. They had 52. They put up 52 
on Idaho State, and he even got the turnover slot machine out there. What What do you mean a turnover slot machine? That was not the only thing. There was a turnover Triton, you know, as well during, you know, another game. But the slot machine was the highlight of the day, for real. Um, FCS kickoff. Technically, Jacksonville State is not an FCS team anymore. They're a transition. But that didn't matter. That did not matter. And, you know, as the day continued to progress, the later games, um, lightning became a huge, huge factor. And, you know, the first half, you know, this game, Stephen and Austin, Jacksonville State, you know, this game was back and forth for the first half. But ultimately, that spread offense, you know, and, I mean, it just overwhelmed Stephen F. Austin. That is not a good look to start the season. They got blown out. The game got called late. And this is not the only game that got called due to Lightning. We'll talk about that game in a moment. But, that again, um, for the purposes of the WAC, Jacksonville State really isn't going to count, you know, against you or for you. And, you know, against you now... Stephen F. Austin, you guys got a tough schedule ahead. You guys, you know, Sam Houston, even though technically Sam Houston's also moving up and their games, you know, uh, I don't know what in the world the WAC and the A-Sun did, you know, with their partnership again this year. They didn't, they didn't, they've done something to where, you know, this such and such counts for such and such and then such and such, you know, counts for something else. But that's, that's all up in smoke now. Stephen F. Austin has to win. They were projected to be the team that comes out of the WAC to represent the WAC in the FCS playoffs, and they did not look like that team that I was talking about in the Week Zero preview on Wednesday night. They did not look like that team Wednesday night. They, or tonight. I almost said today. This afternoon, I meant. Damn. Uh, Stephen F. Austin, not a good look. I'll tell you that much right now. Not a good look. UConn, Utah State. Now, 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 don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Utah State was not looking good at first. Like, what is going on here? Like, why is UConn leading? I was sitting here completely in shock. I was sitting here completely flabbergasted. Like, what do you mean UConn is leading? What do you mean Jim Mora has the UConn Huskies leading? But then Logan Bonner, he found his groove. The Aggies, you know, with three takeaways. Logan Bonner throws three touchdowns to three different receivers. And then, boom, Utah State able to put a damper, you know, on UConn's new head coach debut in Jim Moore. Fortunately for UConn, it only gets tougher from here. Michigan is coming, you know, coming for that rabbit. Coming for that rabbit in, what, a week or two? So that it could get ugly in the big house. It could get ugly. It could get ugly. Um, Wyoming, Illinois. It was also an ugly game. I didn't have this game on very long. Chase Brown and those Illini. They bullied the Cowboys on the ground. 260 yards rushing. When is Craig Bow actually going to get something going for Wyoming? I question what's going to happen. Because, I mean, I hope to watch a lot more Mountain West this year, you know, because I watched a lot of Mountain West football last year. But, you know, Wyoming going to be a drag, you know, on things if they continue to play like this. I mean, come on. Get it together. And then Duquesne, Florida State. This game was also impacted by a lightning delay for 90 minutes. And it caused a lot of confusion. That was not the only game that, you know, again, in the later afternoon, going into the evening, that caused a lot of confusion. Good Lord, man. What what was this? What in the world was this, man? I mean, Florida State, they put up 400 yards on the ground. Three guys went over 100. And those three guys had four TDs between them. Treshawn Ward who's getting some preseason All-American, you know, type award honors. Trey Benson, Lawrence Tolafili. I mean, you know, with Jordan Travis, you know, basically being a game manager, you know, you know, for, for the time being, 
We don't know what he's going to do against LSU, and, we'll, and I'll talk about that, you know, on Wednesday. But Florida State, that's what you needed right there. That's the type of win you needed to start. And, you know, you got something. You got something heading in to next Sunday night against LSU. And then the big one, one of the big ones anyway. You know, technically, we're supposed to be highlighting FCS teams all week zero, but, you know, it's become a free-for-all, you know, at times. Um, really, the only guy that stood out was Demetri Demetrius Davis. He probably was the best player tonight in the MEAC SWAC Challenge with this game between Howard and Alabama State getting impacted so badly by lightning delays that this game was supposed to start at 7 Eastern. did start till way later. And when did this game end? After 1 a.m. Eastern time. At least Alabama State's defense looked good, but Howard, Howard kind of struggled. And, you know, for Alabama State, this is good. This is good, and we're coupled with something else that we're going to talk about. You know, Alabama State was picked third in the SWAC East, but I think some things may be changing, you know. Um, Alabama State still got some stuff to improve on. Howard is probably going to be a basement dweller, you know, in the MEAC. Um, you know, a lot of people are pointing to that Jacksonville, I almost said Jacksonville, I meant Jackson State, Florida A&M game next Sunday as well to decide, pretty much decide the SWAC basically and pretty much decide the SWAC East. But do not overlook Alabama State. Do not overlook them. And then in the final season of this new look, or rather this old look, Conference USA, it's it you know it's going to be entirely new next season. You know you got Charlotte and Florida Atlantic. Both these teams are going to be leaving, and unfortunately Charlotte just couldn't get out of their own way. I mean they, I mean it was it was rough. It was rough for Charlotte. You know Nikosi Perry, he was efficient in this game. You got Larry McCam in the third. He ran. For over 100 yards on the 49ers, I mean, uh, careful with those lights, though, um, Al. So careful with those lights, you know, might get some people epilepsy out here. Uh, but on Willie Taggart's birthday, too, which is uh, a fact that I did not know until today, and I do not want to know again, but it's whatever, man. Florida Atlantic with a huge win to start their season. They beat up on Charlotte 43 13 and then Moorhead State Mercer. I did not watch this game at all. I didn't even know this game was on. I forgot the game was even on, but it didn't matter. I forgot that Moorhead State is a pioneer. <laughs> they're, they're a pioneer football league school, which is basically, you know, D3, you know, with the no scholarships thing. You know, basically a D3 school at this point in football. When it comes to, you know, not having scholarships. But you'd think, you know, not having scholarships would, you know, be a, you know, a detriment to some teams. It's not. Uh, but uh, Moorhead State, it was a detriment today. When the Bears of Mercer put up over 600 yards on you, you, you somebody's got to watch out. And I know the SoCon's got to watch out. But also Auburn, they got to watch out as well. Mercer will be playing them, you know. They'll be playing them very, very soon. So, uh, yeah. Um, you know, Mercer's a dark horse pick in the SoCon. And, you know, you know, SoCon is, you know, hoping to look and have a little bit of a better season. You know, getting more teams to the playoffs and everything like that. So, you know, Mercer with a big one to start week, week zero. And then FAMU... The Rattlers of Florida A&M taking on North Carolina. The big question going into this weekend actually was involving Florida A&M, and that's why I was talking, you know, a little bit more about Alabama State and how you know they could impact things. FAMU had 20 players ineligible due to NCAA violations, and yet they still kept this game close. They still kept it close for the first half, at least. Drake May, he got named the starter for North Carolina. He tossed five touchdowns in this game. Brilliant stuff. 
and the defense eventually overwhelmed the Rattlers. North Carolina put up 56 on them. Fam, you only put up 24. Um, North Carolina's defense got to improve. Drake May, you know, again, five TDs, you know, that's that's definitely good. But it's against Florida A&M, and the Florida A&M's not even focused on North Carolina right now. They're they probably they they you know once once you know once North Carolina started putting up the points, and you know started pulling away, Florida A&M's focused on Jackson State, <laughs> like for real. Uh, but North Texas UTEP, if you got. If you wanted a game that started on time, this game did not start on time either. But it's okay, though. My Mean Green, Austin on, with three TDs, he, he, he did good. He did good. Um, definitely a struggle at times. UTEP more so than North Texas. You know, I mean, UTEP could never get out of their own way in this game either. I mean, this is just a... Uh, this is just a rough performance at times. Like, you know, UTEP had momentum, but they just could never capitalize on anything. And, I mean, you know, UNT takes that W. Good on, good on my alma mater. Good on my alma mater. Nevada, New Mexico State. The ref ball, hashtag ref ball moment of the night comes from this game. Toa Tala with over 100 yards and a TD. Nevada, they survive in this game. They uh, they let Jerry kill and, and the Aggies get a little bit too you know a little bit too close. It's not a good look right there in Nevada. Not a good look. But the ref ball moment of the night came from this game because the refs. I don't know what in the world they were thinking because you know they never reviewed a call. You know, that was supposed to be an interception. It should have been an interception. They called it a drop. Didn't look at it. Despite the fact that Mexico State called the timeout to have them look at it. Nobody nobody did anything. Nobody did anything. Why? Why? That's stupid. Somebody do something. You gotta be kidding me, bruh. Come on. It's it's it it's a clear interception. And they didn't do anything about it. Like, why? Why, man? I don't understand. I really don't. It's whatever. 23-12, you know, the bad. You know, they did, they did okay. They did okay. It's okay. It's not much. But it's something. They win. You know, Mount West had a pretty decent showing in week one. Sands, Wyoming, of course. But, you know, Nevada with a win. Oh, wait. I forgot one. Vanderbilt, Hawaii, the game that just ended before I started recording tonight. Mike Wright, four TDs, two on the ground, two passing. Vanderbilt's defense was out here forcing fumbles. They forced two fumbles. Hawaii never got anything going decent. I mean, this is just... You know, they, they started out with the 7-0 lead, and then, you know, reality set in as Vanderbilt put up 63 points on Hawaii. What do you mean Vanderbilt put up 63 points? I'm surprised that Vanderbilt just ran all over Hawaii the way they did. You know, you know a lot of people picked Vanderbilt as a 6.5 point favorite, and that did not happen. Which is why you don't bet with money, kids. But this game was just bizarre to me to see Vanderbilt dominate a team after their opener last year against the um, against a certain you know SoCon team named East Tennessee State. You know, in which they got whooped twenty three to three. But Hawaii, you know. Tippy Chang trying to rebuild, use multiple quarterbacks in this game, which is never a recipe for, you know, starting out good. It's always a recipe for disaster, I think, in my opinion. And we'll talk about that on Wednesday with another team that we have to talk about that people are hyping up. Um, but Vanderbilt, what a great start to their season. You know, whoever that one guy is that picked Vanderbilt to win the SEC East, 
keep on hoping. Keep on hoping because, I mean, that that's a damn good start right there. That's a damn good start. So, again, after 14 hours of, you know, college football, I can safely say we're back. <sighs> the months, the next six months on this channel are going to finally be normal again. It's going to be nonstop college football, NFL, college basketball, NBA, you know, just all that gloriousness combined, you know, into this channel. And I hope we continue to grow, you know, that there should be some growth. Hopefully y'all stick around for more than 40 seconds during the video, you know. And you know, and I'm sure just like a, you know, I'm sure just like a thing that says, you know, who's subscribed, that's watching, and who's not. I'm pretty sure the majority of y'all ain't subscribed. Y'all need to do that so we can get to discussing some of that sweet, sweet college football. You know, what did you think of Week Zero? Um, best impressions, worst impressions. What you think? You know, do you think Scott Frost is going to get fired? I think he'll get fired eventually. Probably at the end of the season when, you know, that buyout ain't worth nothing. Um, what did you think of, you know, the FCS kickoff and the MEAC Spike Challenge? Do you focus, the, really, the games that were supposed to be focused on for Week Zero, but, you know, the FBS has started to invade, you know, on the FCS's um, week, you know, because, you know, it is what it is. Um, what did you think of the other games? You know, did you think... You know what? What you know? Like, come on. What do, what do you think about tonight? Uh, because I mean, there was a lot of stuff tonight. A lot, a lot of stuff that happened. And until Wednesday, probably Wednesday night. Just be, just be wary of that. Uh, I am returning to my job this week full time, and hopefully getting, hopefully getting it together. You know, uh, until, you know. Until next Wednesday, or rather not next Wednesday, because it's a new week already. Until this Wednesday, Big Boy Sports signing out, and I'll see you for the last video of August. Take care, everybody.